get started. And oh, and then Kenzie is rejoining. All righty. Let's see if it works this time. Happy Friday. My name is Matt with Carolina Coops and welcome to Video Chicken. And we are running about five minutes late. I apologize about that. We are having some technical difficulties. Shocker. And I'm just making sure we are now streaming live. It looks like it is officially working. I was logged into the wrong spot, of course. Um, there we go. Everyone's coming in now. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the end of the week. We've made it. Again, my name is Matt with Carolina Coops, and welcome to Video Chicken. And um, today, I, I may or may not have Kristen to my left. I am uh, live in Raleigh right now. And Kristen may or may not be able to join us. We're, we're, we're set up for her. She's hopeful. But uh, a little behind the scenes, she uh, had surgery, quite extensive surgery. Uh, the good news is she's doing extremely well, but she is in a lot of pain, which you can imagine when you're coming out of surgery, it can hurt a lot. Uh, but she does have a major phobia of missing out on things. So I have a feeling she will be joining us. Da oh, wait a minute. Huh? FOMO. FOMO. Yeah, so there she, she is listening. She calls it FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, we got Mackenzie in the green room. We're going to go ahead and get started with the top three questions. Also, today we have a guest speaker coming on. It was a last, he had to get approval, which sounds kind of cool. He had to get approval from his marketing department to come on and talk to us about that Acre product. I think last week we talked a lot about it. There's this big discussion, this big debate. What should we do behind the scenes with getting rid of high density polyethylene? and switching to this acre material. And I thought, you know, one of the things I'm really enjoying about this show is I am letting you guys come in and really see my world, see what happens behind the scenes with running a business. You know, I love answering all your questions and comments out there. Uh, but I also, you know, I feed off of your guys' input greatly, especially when it comes to the improvements. I hope you guys are not hearing those notifications. Again, brand new computer. Thought I turned off all the sounds and apparently not. Um, Mackenzie, are you ready? Do I get a nod? Let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead and add her in here. There is the lovely Mackenzie. She hates, I know she wants to yell at me. She likes, she refers Kenzie, but um, let's see, I'm gonna try to sneak over here a little bit. I don't fun. hate it. <laughs> I just don't prefer it. Gotcha. Uh, let me get back to, there we go. Mackenzie, how you doing? Um, pretty good. Awesome. We had uh, we had um, fake spring time on, and now we're in third. Uh oh, boy, we are having a rough day. I swear, it feels like today should be Monday. Um, our guest speaker Chandler just joined us in the green room, so I'm glad he is here. Chandler, if you can hear us, just hang tight, bud. Uh, we're going to get you on. We're running a little late today. Got technical difficulties. Every week I'm always adding more equipment. But anyways, so I lost you a little bit there, Mackenzie. I'm, what, say it again. I said Tuesday. I feel like I'm frozen again. No. Um, Tuesday we had fake springtime, and then today we're in third winter. So. Yeah, I was on That's the phone. How it goes. I was on the phone with Evan actually just right for the show, and he was telling me how it was not the nicest weather. There we go. Maybe this is a little bit better. So I even added a big screen up top, and let's see. Oh, oh yeah, you have no idea. I should take some pictures. Like <laughs> again, it, it's getting fancy around here. I like this better. I, I think Kristen's right. This was the point of the teleprompter, but the device would not fill it in the te teleprompter. That's a different story. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's make sure the comments are rolling in. Let's make sure everything looks good, sounds good, all that good stuff before we get started. Of course, there's my father about time. Yes, I am sorry, Jerry, that we are running late. Better late than never, right? Or is that an excuse people make just to make themselves feel better? Mm, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. And I've been told, uh, I don't know, Fingered's in the green room yet. She has said, keep it under an hour today. So we are going to do the best. I think she just doesn't like working. Oh, oh, are we coming in? Are you going to join us? Someone's wobbling around a little bit. Um, I know she does not want to miss out. Uh, you, you, you're going to join us? I mean, at least for a little bit, maybe. Say hi to everyone. I know they would love to see you. And there is Ingrid. Perfect. All righty. Hi, Ingrid. How you doing? Don't talk. Just say yes, no. Hi, hi. Um, FYI, I love your shows. All right, so James, thank you. 
Um, all sounds good, thank you. And um, looks like the comments are coming in. Looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and get started. Mackenzie, top three questions for this week. Um, I've been taking a lot of extra calls this week. And uh, can we say why? Have... Can we say why real quick again? Because I, I do want to mention behind the scenes because we've had some people. I don't know if you saw it even on Facebook. Boy, they got non fired up. They said they emailed us three weeks ago and still didn't hear back, which wasn't true. She had proof that she emailed them back in four days. Uh, but the good news is there's so many emails coming in for chicken coops that we can't answer them fast enough. And then, of course, you are running solo because Christy is on vacation. We do allow people a little free time, not much, but a little. <laughs> so I, how has that been going? That's gotta be brutal, not having her there. Um, I certainly have taken her help for granted. Um, trying to remember how to do all of the things that I have taught her to do at this point and doing kind of what my old job was on top of my new job, it's like cramming 16 hours worth of work into eight hours, um, which is a good exercise for my brain, but, uh, oof. Yeah. Now, I, I tell you, you definitely know when you're uh, missing people. Uh, you, you, you definitely know when how important they are when they're gone. Uh, real quick before I forget to ask, because I am playing around between two different screens so I can see you up there on the larger screen. Uh, everyone in the uh, comments, uh, let me know. I want to make sure you can see the interview with no problem, just because I'm going between two different screens. want to make sure there's no issues there. Um, we got a lot of comments coming in, which makes me very, very... Oh, hi. Hi. You going to be okay? Yeah. I knew you couldn't resist. I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. I hope the doctor's not watching. <laughs> you, I heard you just on the phone with the doctors. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. You are Can you a. Log that in? I um okay. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm late to work. I'm late to work. <laughs> well, we're gonna give you a pass this time. I don't know. You said this, that's where I could see the comments and help you out. It, it, it is. I think I'm not going to be able to do this right now okay. on the spot. I, I would have to pause and think too much. And we already got our guest speaker today. And people are actually already commenting, wanting to learn more about Acre. So Chandler is Good. in. And so make sure someone give me a heads up, especially Ingrid, if you can just let me know, are you able to see it? Because I've moved the screen over to a big screen. I, I just want to make sure everyone can see us as normal. You're not moving. Yes, you can. Okay, good. Here we go. All right, so let's go. Oh, do I get tea? Mm -hmm. What a great mug, too. All right, top three questions. Go ahead, Mackenzie, and then I'm going to shut up. What is your lead time? Didn't we, didn't we answer this last week? Um, I it's, didn't ask it last week. Well, it's a long time, but it's getting shorter. Long time, short time. All right, there's, you know, I, I talked to a person yesterday and I told him, I said, the official answer is, I think we're looking at October right now. And that is a long ways away. I get it. The unofficial answer, which I am just praying to God any day now, we're going to be able to uh, find out the good news that we're going to be able to take possession of this new building. And that's going to change everything. But I just don't, I love that everyone listens to what I say and they hold me to it. Uh, so I want to choose my words carefully and make sure I don't mislead people, but I can tell you we're hopefully gonna shorten that very, very soon. Um, I can't even put a guess to it if we were to shorten it with the new building and splitting up the business. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna get it down to at least no more than 90 days, but the long-term goal is if all goes well, you call today, it gets shipped today. I might even make a t-shirt that says ships today, something like that. Anyway, so hopefully that ain't, <laughs> Don't, Mackenzie, don't stop it. It'll happen, I promise you, it will happen, guarantee it. Well, we'll do whatever we can to help. It sounds like my fingers are gonna be busy booking shipments, I'll tell you that. Well, um, I do have some good news. Nobody knows this except for Nan. Um, you know, I, I, if, if anybody is in the hiring business for their business or working for somebody else, uh, you know, this is how Nan found you. And she made a good point yesterday that Majority of our staff originates from the food and beverage industry. Nan was mm -hmm. born and raised in the food and be beverage industry. And, uh, and she's right. There is, if you can survive and do well, being a waitress, waiter, 
bartender, chef, whatever it is, you guys are good. You guys are good for many, many reasons. Uh, the point is we were down in Florida and we had one of the best waitresses ever. And I asked her, I said, do you want a job? <laughs> she was that good. So uh, I gave her the information and it was God, two months ago. I thought I'd never hear from her again. She reached out yesterday, said, I would love to come work for you guys. So I can't wait uh, for you guys to meet her. She is awesome. And she even asked, she, she's younger. She asked, is there anyone as young as me? I said, well, you got Mackenzie. You guys are two, you'll be two peas in the pod. So don't. Well, my birthday so, is on Thursday, so. It is going to be Mackenzie's birthday. We have missed a lot of birthdays. <laughs> Something a lot of people don't know what we do in Carolina Coops, just like when we were kids. We still celebrate everyone's birthday. Um, we take a little special time to sing happy birthday and have cupcakes just like we're back in fifth grade. <laughs> yeah, cupcakes are pretty prevalent here. Um, but back to the questions. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I digress. Yeah, <laughs> um, how do I keep the water in my water bar clean? That's a great question. Yeah, you can't see it. They don't know. I would say what you can't see. So I immediately am thinking about something I saw the other day on YouTube and it was titled the best way to keep your chickens water clean and thawed. And when I watched this video, if I even tried to promote what he was promoting, I think we'd be crucified. Um, and you know, it, it, well, anyways, if you watch the video, you'll understand what I was getting at, but you know, it shouldn't be dirty. Okay, here's what happens. When that water is in the barrel, the barrel itself acts as part of the filter system because any large debris should settle to the bottom. All right, and as long as you're not going in there, stirring it up, going, <laughs> like, you know, your own brew, um, it should settle at the bottom and only the water should be going up because that hose bib at the bottom is, I don't know, maybe six inches from the bottom. So that in itself will help keep the water clean from inside the water bar. Now, if you have any concerns that you, the water might be dirty or you got debris inside your water bar, just disconnect and flush it out. We can probably do a video here soon showing how to do that because I know that I've never had to flush out our water bars, but we've definitely taken the time to reset the rain barrel if needed. Um, so you just take it apart and flush it out. Very cool. Um, do I need to paint my coop? Do I need to paint my coop? Yes, you mm -hmm. should paint or stain it, right? One or the other. Right? You should. Anything you have outside built out of wood, if you want it to last as long as possible, when you paint it, stain it, oil it, what those three things are doing is keeping the water out from penetrating the lumber. And what you have to understand why that's important is, believe it or not, water doesn't rot wood. Water feeds the wood destroying organisms. So as long as you don't give the food source to the wood destroying organisms to feed on the wood and have the water, the wood will be preserved. Think about it. There's logs that have been underwater for hundreds of years. You know, you watch swamp loggers, they're perfectly fine, but it, it's when you go between this wet dry phase. That's where it feeds the wood destroying organisms. So all you want to do is keep that in mind and say, okay, I should put something on there to prevent water from penetrating into the wood. Um, and then there's even Thompson water seal. You can, I guess you can say a fourth is a wax and Thompson water seal is a liquid wax that um, helps keep that water out, but it definitely doesn't last as long. So there's good pros and cons to everything. Uh, that is something I want to talk about more in depth in the future, because one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, and they ask us all the time, what kind of paint should I paint my coop with? Uh, we actually don't recommend a paint. We use a solid acrylic stain. And we feel and have seen it just works so much better. It goes on just like paint. You would think it's paint, but it penetrates in deeper. The disadvantage is because it does penetrate in so deep, you will get leaching from the tannins in, in the knot, for example, coming through. And that has, can cause major problems. So we, have, we actually have to go through and spot treat or spot paint those knots with an oil-based primer to block that. Or if you don't do that, because the stain is penetrating, which is what you want, it'll bring some things through. 
You don't usually have a lot of knots, though, because of the grade of wood that you have, right? That is the idea. Uh, that's obviously been a major subject lately is the quality of the lumber. We purposely get premium lumber, which is not something that you'll see in the Western rule book mm -hmm. that they have to go by. But because you see our lumber, we can't hide it behind drywall or spec. Yeah. You know? um, but there is a grade of how many knots you're allowed to have, and it's, it's been a crapshoot lately, that's for sure. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, Mackenzie, I would love if you stick around a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't know if we talk enough about what you do. And I, I, Meet the team. I love meet the team. <laughs> do a meet the team. Uh, Mackenzie, you know, she came on as, uh, I guess you could call it an administration assistant to non. Mackenzie has just crushed it. Yeah. She is so smart. She's witty. She hustles. She's always there. Um, and she, she's been learning and taking on the logistics of all the purchasing of uh, things from overseas or, you know, here in the States and handles all the shipping. And because we're about to bring on a, a gentleman, I hope he's not getting impatient. He's sitting in the green room. We're going to bring on Chandler here in a couple seconds. I hope you're ready, bud. Give me a thumbs up if you are. Yeah, he's smiling. That's all I need to see. Uh, we're going to talk about this acre product and I'm so mad at myself. I forgot my two samples that I've been well, Mackenzie's the one, there we go. Maybe you should stay on. Mackenzie's the one that came up with the idea. Let's bite into it. Um, so let, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and bring Chandler in. Let's see, and I hope I'm saying that right, Chandler. We're gonna bring him in off to the right. Chandler, how you doing today, sir? Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, what's that? We might need to get closer together. What, what, what well, I, I don't I don't want to bump you on accident. I get a little crazy. I don't want to hurt you. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll put Mackenzie back in the green room. But Mackenzie, do you have any questions actually for Chandler uh, specifically about this acre? Um, not off the top of my head. I've been trying to do my research on it pretty well. Um, you know how I get learning about new things. I want to know all that I can about it. But um, no, not off the top of my head. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Well, I'm gonna, over. I'm gonna go back in my hiding spot. And, <laughs> All right, let's know. see if I can do this. Uh, that's a long ways up there. All right, oh, that's, okay, good. So Chandler, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I know I kinda popped this question on you at the last minute if you can join us, but no I can't problem. thank you enough. Uh, so no, for no our problem. viewers, our viewers out there too, if you haven't caught some of our past shows, I've been talking a lot about this product I discovered um, I think on the internet, I was just Googling and it's a product called Acre. And so far it seems like a product that is too good to be true. And we all know what happens when we think it's too good to be true. It probably isn't, but I tell you, this stuff has been awesome. And the whole idea is, and let me go back to, let's see where my cursor is. Oh uh, yeah, this is dry. Uh, oh, da, 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 da. Have you started a prototype yet? No, we have not started a prototype, but I want to explain to everyone that okay so um and chandler you should be able to see our website right here i'm just going to go home uh well i'm not going to go home you know what i mean go to the home go to the chick coops carolina coop and we love this material our customers love this material it's called high density polyethylene and it's something that we switched to a long time ago it's been a phenomenal product problem is one it's extremely expensive uh two as of recent here we go. There's a good shot. This white material that makes up the high density, that makes up the deep litter. It's essentially giant cutting boards. They're giant cutting boards, exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> with the deep freeze, it caused 80% of the manufacturers to shut down. And I was told, Matt. In Texas, yeah. In Texas, yeah. it's not available. I had no idea how much of the high density was made down there. So that kind of freaked me out. So we started shopping around and we came across this acre product. and it started making me realize we'll be able to replace the high density polyethylene in the deep litter along with our siding. And we're about to get into why. So Chandler, while I have you, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to your website. That is okay, right? I know we had to get permission from your marketing team. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Right, awesome. All right. <laughs> so again, folks, what this is all about is diving into more of the scientific side of this acre product because I'm nervous. I, the, the high density has been an awesome product, but here what I have learned is we have a product that's just as good, but it's a lot more environmentally friendly. So here we are at Modern Mill. Modern-mill.com, is that right? It is. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Dash -mill .com. Yeah. All right, so Chandler, if you could take it from here, I'm gonna go on to 
Uh, where should I go? The sheets? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I think, you know, <clears throat> kind of a fun site to poke around, but, um, you know, I, I'd be happy to share a little more information about about our material that I think will, you know, I, you know, Matt, you and I have talked and it generally uh, answers some questions and raises some more questions. And we and we have a, a state of mind that I know you've been going through that we, we jokingly refer to as acre brain. When you think about all the things that you can do with this material and, and is it true? Can you do that? So um, absolutely correct out. You know, I was listening in on the conversation from the green room and I heard a lot of a lot of points brought up, a lot of questions that people were asking, right, about painting, staining, tan and bleed, uh, rot moisture concerns and then we talk about high density polyethylene and we talk about uh, allocation price increases uh, the deep freeze and the effects there but um, you know we are really excited about this material because uh, what we do think in in that conversation that you raised about uh, the high density polyethylene plastics and woods we're excited about our acre material because uh, though we are a 100 percent tree free product we do marry the best of both of those products, the best of wood and the best of the plastics, combine them together and mitigate and remove all the downsides, right? So um, how do we do that? How do we have a material that looks and feels and processes and stains and finishes like wood without wood? We do it with something called a rice hull. So right there on that lower right, I think if you scroll left, you see that right there. Uh, the U.S. is a net exporter of rice hulls meaning we have rice farms, heavily, heavily populations of rice farms in Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, even in California. Uh, the rice hull is an agricultural byproduct. The farmers remove it from the rice grain and they throw it in the landfill. Uh, they use it for animal bedding. They use it for, they grind it up, put in some animal feed, but it is an agricultural byproduct. So we take that rice hull uh, into our mill in Mississippi, which we are located there because of the access to the rice farms. Uh, we blend it with 18 other ingredients and we create our acre material. So this material, and I, you know, I can hold up a sample. I'm not sure if people can see this. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, bo I'll bounce back and uh, bring you back up here. Let's see, back to the, let's see, were we on the main page, I hope? Um, where were we? We were right here under the one that there says we go. interview. Hey, the one that nice says interview, you. imagine that. Yeah. yeah. So I have a piece of acre in my hand right here. I'll try to hold it, hold it steady, but uh, it looks good. So this material, because of the rice hulls, we have something that looks and feels like wood. And like I said, it processes and finishes like wood. So we extrude this material in sheet form. And at that point, you have a material that's UV resistant, UV stable, uh, rot and termite resistant uh, and water resistant. We say uh, we don't say waterproof, but I would tell you that over a 24 hour test, our material absorbs less than 2.5% moisture. And as you talked about, moisture isn't necessarily what, what kills wood, but it's what creates problems of the cycling of the moisture cycling. It leads to coatings failures. It leads to, to promotion of rot and fungal growth, which we are able to mitigate because of the, the water resistance of our material. Uh, you also mentioned tannin bleeds. We do not have tannins, right? So we have a material with these rice hulls and uh, there is a PVC resin component to it. Uh, again, looks, feels, processes, stains, oils, finishes like wood, but doesn't have any of those associations with it, right? The tannin bleed, the knots, you know, trying to fight over the, the, the clear vertical grain or the knotty grain, knotty grain grades of woods and the, and the supply shortages there that we're seeing in the cedar and all sorts of other, other woods. But, you know, we take this material that looks like this in its raw form and then we apply stain and it looks like this. So this is uh, any any water-based stain, oil, Cabot, Durham Williams, Benjamin Moore, anything you can buy in your local hardware store or paint supplier, you can apply to Acre. You can also paint it if you wanted to paint it white. Again, looks, feels like wood. You can rip it on your table saw. You can cut it with a CNC, a router. You can sand it. Uh, you can even thermoform it, right? So you can oh. bend it. Oh. Right? So, Oh. This is, um, you want to get complex shapes around your windows or you want to make a giant paper clip like that that I have there. You just heat it up to about 250 degrees, hold it into shape and it'll cool off and, and it'll retain that shape. Um, so what's exciting about the, the material, aside from all these properties and benefits that we talk about, is also the, you know, the fact that it uses an upcycle waste product, right? So we have this agricultural byproduct that's being thrown in the landfills. It's an extremely resilient natural fiber. 
Um, so it takes a long time to break down. So we take that, we blend it with our other ingredients. We create this, this product, this material, and we do it in a closed loop zero waste manufacturing facility as well. So we capture all dust, we regrind all scrap right back into the process, and we continue to manufacture with what we waste. So a closed loop zero waste that's cyclical, keeps going around. Uh, so for, for applications like yours, what we're really excited about, I know you're excited about is this material is a new building material, right? It's, as I said, the best of woods, the best of these uh, resins or these composites, wood alternatives, marry the two together, looks and feels and processes and finishes. And even actually people joke when they cut it, it kind of, it smells like some people say Cheerios, some people say Rice Krispies, but it, <laughs> it has a genuine woodworking uh, appearance and feel. The whole experience is really great. Um, but yeah, with that, you can use it for, like you said, your siding, you can use it for your trim. You could use it for the flooring. You could use it for the, uh, for the bears there. You can use it for pretty much anything that you would use wood or a non-wood product for. You can use this product for, but with, uh, an impact on sustainability and also again, the genuine look and feel of wood, right? So for people that you hear it all the time, right? Like, uh, people want the low maintenance of, of the, of the wood alternatives, but they just wish it looked and felt like wood. And, and finally, we're excited to offer a product that does actually do this. That's sort of my, my <laughs> I can go on and on, but yeah, with that, I assume you guys probably have some more questions for me. I'm happy to answer those, but uh, hopefully that also did answer some questions. I can't wait to try it out. I mean, who gets goosebumps over new building materials? You. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. This is why Chandler, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on and it, it, it's just amazing. It doesn't it sound like it's too good to be true. I mean, it looked fantastic, stained, painted. I felt it, it's got heft to it. It's it, it just hits all those great things. And then you can make crazy, crazy shapes with it. I had no idea yeah. you could heat it up and, and, and change the shape. An arch yeah. chicken coop. Can you, exactly, can yeah. you imagine all the possibilities there? I actually hope Evan's not watching right now because he's already gotten off to another design going, oh my gosh, I can mold and bend. That is absolutely amazing. And this and is- There's no supply issues, right? No, that's another benefit too, is that we are, uh, you know, we're shipping truckloads of material with a two week lead time right now. So yeah, there's mm -hmm. no supply shortages. And, and I can tell you that there is no shortage of uh, rice hulls in the near future. I think uh, at full capacity for our mill, we consume 3% of Mississippi's rice hull supply. Oh, so wow. we feel good about that. Yeah. I love those colors. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a lot that was just said. Yeah. And I want to hit. I want to go back and hit on some of the key things that, I, that come out to me and say, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing." No trees. All right. They're not. They don't have to harvest any trees. Right. That's a good thing. Um, I didn't. I knew it was made uh, using a. You call it upcycled, right? It's an upcycled product or a byproduct from the rice production. Correct. Yeah. So we're using something that would have gone in the landfills, and I'm. I, I forgot this rice is grown right here in the States. Mm -hmm. I'm such an idiot sometimes. I'm picturing like overseas patties, where you're watching yeah. these Vietnam movies and there's all the rice patties. I'm just assuming it comes from there. I forgot it's it's even coming from right here in the States. That is awesome. Um, and, you, and, and thank you for hitting those points that I was saying. I don't want people to think this is just me, but this is the things that we deal with, like the tannins and being able to prevent it from rotting. And it, it comes in different widths or right well there's a lot and, of go ahead different shapes sorry yeah so yeah we we manufacture the material from a quarter inch thick up to one inch thick oh, good. and we also we provide it in sheet goods up to 20 foot long and also in dimensional trim so it can be used for you know if you wanted to mill it and mold it for you guys i know you guys have a lot of different components and parts of the of the chicken coop um so in the sheet good form or in the dimensional trim form in various thicknesses um, and then we do have other additional products that service more of like the, the commercial residential building materials industry, but yeah, it's, uh, available in a variety of, of, uh, of profiles and thicknesses and dimensions. Yeah. And one of the, uh, one of the things, well, okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Well, well, okay. Okay. I'm being told to go back to the interview. I'm sorry, but this just reminds me because I forgot. I'm going to check to see if we have any questions. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go to see if we have any questions. Cause that is one thing I hog up all the, uh, questions. Uh, that people have because I got questions, but this is no. Definitely... You can go ahead and ask your questions. Well, so first thing I wanted uh, someone in California when we were talking about it in the last show, they said, "Matt, make sure 
uh, you're careful about the formaldehyde that's going to be in it. And there's no, it's free of, you know, if you could talk a little bit about this, if you could, please. Um, free of the formaldehyde, and I saw a phenol, and then it just went away on me. Could you talk about a little bit more about the things that no, people would normally be scared about, skeptical about with this product? I know like PVC, uh, in the beginning, people were very, very upset when we were using a PVC board, and they said it was more about the production. It was very toxic. Right. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, with PVC as a water bar, people are like, oh, it's leaching toxins into the water. So these are things, you know, I take it as a legitimate concern, and I want to be able to have answers for our viewers. What would you say to that as far as those again, common concerns that people have? Absolutely. So there's a there's a couple levels to that, and there is um, you're absolutely right. So if you go back historically about 15 years ago with PVC, and you also have to consider that there's rigid and there's soft PVC, right? So when you look at soft PVC and we talk about the history where there is leaching, right, and concerns around children's toys and being mouthed and, and toxins there, those were um, non-rigid PVCs which had plasticizers. Uh, we do not have any phthalates. We do not have any uh, formaldehyde. There's no binders, no adhesives in this material. Uh, so non-leaching. There's been a lot of, and get, without getting too deep into the chemistry about it, but there used to be lead stabilizers. There's no longer lead stabilizers. There's a lot of, um, there have been a lot of improvements in PVC technology over the past 15 years that we try to help educate people on. I would tell you in addition to that uh, as well is that our material, while there is a PVC component to it, the majority of our material by volume is rice hulls, mm -hmm. right? So there's PVC, and then there's acre which has some pvc but less pvc than pvc right so they're not the same product while we do use a pvc resin component to our material it is acre and that's what we're really excited about is that this is a new building material right uh an evolution an innovation that that we think people have been waiting for aesthetically and from a from a performance perspective but also from a technology side from us it's it's incredibly exciting to have a, a pvc that's combined with an agricultural natural fiber and agricultural byproduct. I would also tell you that when you talk about um, PVC as a resin uh, or a polymer, you compare us to some of the others, the polypropylenes, the polyethylenes, those materials are 100% petroleum based. We are 50% petroleum based and then chlorine comes from the seawater, salt and seawater, right? So against some of the competitive products were considerably less petroleum based than those other polymers and then you take that again and use the multiplier of including the um, the rice hulls, where again even less uh, of the PVC. But PVC, you know, is a good is a good product, and uh, it is like I said recyclable. It's more a matter of what you do with it and what you use with it. But we also find too, from a from a waste perspective, with the life expectancy of a material like ours that has a limited lifetime warranty, um, you know, you really I would, when you use it, you don't have a lot of discard or scrap. Uh, that goes with it. And if you do have scrap, like I said, we, we regrind it and we repurpose it into our manufacturing uh, facility. So sustainability is very important to our, to our company, to our, to our founders, to our leadership team um, across all the levels from both the, you know, the, the procurement of, of the raw materials. And then also on the, uh, like I said, on the close of the zero waste uh, manufacturing perspective. So I hope that answers that question again without getting too technical on it. But again, you're right. No formaldehydes, no phthalates, no bisphenol A, no lead stabilizers, uh, no adhesives whatsoever. So that is important. It, it, it absolutely is, you know, and it's just making me realize. I mean, I, I know Inger's going to yell at us. It's already 1238. I mean, we can go on and on. And if it's okay well, with you, I would like to. Yeah, because, we do have a question. Uh, yeah, let's Melissa go Melissa Burdett says, how does modern mill rice hulls hold up in cold environments such as negative temperatures, extreme cold? So yeah, in extreme cold, I mean, with the resin component to it, you will, it, the material does get more brittle in colder temperatures. Um, but again, in what's consistent with some of the foam PVC competitive boards and trim boards that are on the market, um, you know, depending on what the use is there, if you're using it for a, a space like this and construction building material siding, that there's no concern with the with the uh, with the cold environments, the freeze thaw. Again, a lot of a lot of cold weather cycling. What you guys talked about with a lot of issues with wood products in general is associated with moisture, right? So when a material takes up moisture and then it freezes, mm -hmm. the water becomes ice and expands. 
and that's where you have your issues. With our material in its raw form unfinished, you have less than 2.5% moisture absorption on the 24 hour test, which is almost none. And then <laughs> I don't see a cat walking us. across. Yeah, but, and uh, us. so you don't have moisture absorption, you don't have the you don't have the freeze thaw, the swelling, the you know, there's no swell, right? So we run tests for for uh, increase in weight, but also swelling, and it's very, very minimal. So a lot of those uh, failures that are associated with moisture uptake and freeze thaw cycles, you do not experience with with acre. And I would tell you also that aside from the resin component of the material, the rice hulls themselves, you know, their purpose in life is to is to protect this rice grain, right? It's protected it from the sun. It's to protect it from the weather, from water, and from pests. There's a high silica content in the material uh, that provides an incredible amount of resilience to it. So in historically, when you look at wood, wood composites, wood polycomposites, where they take polymers and they blend them with wood fibers, wood absorbs 40 to 50 percent uh, moisture, right? So you still have this sort of this opening for, for moisture absorption and failure, whereas the rice hulls absorb, I think, less than 10 percent in their raw form. So again, it's this it's the best of all the, the best natural fiber you could take with what we consider to be uh, the most, uh, I guess, sustainable resins that we have. And again, with the ratios that we have, you know, it, we feel like we, we check off all the boxes for both performance, sustainability, and, uh, and life cycle. Um, and also to the cold temperatures, and this is more from a manufacturing side, one of the things we constantly have to deal with is the expansion and contraction. One of the biggest negatives that we've run across with high density polyethylene is that stuff will expand and contract a lot. Um, is it true that this will expand yeah. and contract less than high density correct yeah and there's there's a couple things when you're when you're looking at high density polyethylene um from an expansion and contraction side yes we expand and contract uh significantly less than high density polyethylene part of that is because we're a foamed material right so we introduce air when we're when we're manufacturing this what that helps with is it helps with with weight it helps with cost but it also helps with expansion and contraction because you don't have that density to push this material right so um we even expand and contract because again because of the natural fibers the rice hulls we expand and contract 10 percent less than even competitive foam pvc products on the market right wow. and it's a linear equation so depending on what the with the length of the board and the temperature swing you see you know i think our our equation is 2.6 times 10 to the negative fifth which is basically uh, feet cool. per feet per cell for uh, Fahrenheit <laughs> degree of change, right? Which means if the temperature changes 60 degrees and you have a 18 foot board, it's going to move a quarter of an inch approximately, right? So, and then when you fasten it, if you glue it or nail it or screw it, like you can do with this material, that mitigates that because it doesn't have that same force because of the density differences between our material and some of the polyethylenes. Um, and that was something I wanted to go back to uh, real quick. I just want to remind our uh, listeners that one of the things I was surprised about, I have an, an echo. I'm not sure where that's happening. Uh, sorry about the echo. It wasn't happening earlier. Oh, 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 oh. Is that, is that you? Yeah, I don't know. Let me uh, let me try something here. That echo is driving me crazy. So yeah, it's on Chandler's side. Uh, so I'm not sure if there's anything going on your end. Uh, I'm just gonna mute you for a second. But I know you can still hear well, me. That we had it. We had someone say that he looks a lot like Luke Skywalker. Do you get that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, he's getting a lot of a lot of credibility. Oh, good. Him. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, we are huge. Forces with him. Yeah, we are huge Star Wars fans. Yeah. Um, all right, so here's the thing I couldn't believe is you can work it and paint it, stain it just like wood. There is one thing you can't do that's like wood. Um, and in our case, it's not a big deal because you don't want to glue what this product like you would. Um, we don't have a reason to glue yeah. sheet goods. Uh, but I just want to let everyone out there know that you wouldn't use a wood glue, if I remember correctly. You can use an adhesive, uh, which again, in, with our coops, where we're going to use this product, it's not necessary. However, um, there is a type of glue or adhesive or sealant you can use, especially if you want the caulk in corners. Uh, Chandler, if you could 
discuss a little bit what is what would be recommended. Let's say in our example, you know, you're putting in together this deep litter, you're creating a bathtub, uh, and a lot of people like to go in there and caulk it, and you can't, nothing really sticks to high density. But I imagine here's this opportunity where now they can go in and caulk those seams and make it, you know, beautiful. What would you recommend for that sealant? Sure. Yeah. Sorry about that echo if it's coming from me here, but um, that's all right. Yeah. I mean, essentially sealants and, and glues, anything except for wood glue, because wood glue re requires absorption to work. So you can use um, like foaming Gorilla Glue, polyurethane adhesives, epoxies, PVC cements, uh, construction adhesives like your liquid nails, your PL premium, type bond polyurethane. What we tend to recommend to people is depending on what the application is and the environment is, you want to you want to choose the adhesive for that environment, right? So if it's outdoor, exposed to weather, exposed to water, choose the adhesive that can meet those needs and it's going to bond our material unless you're planning on using PVA wood glue. That's the one glue that does not work well with us, but cool. But yeah, silicones, any sort of caulking, that's a piece of cake. That, that sounds simple. And we have uh, some people asking about cost. Do you need to be a wholesaler to buy the product? Is it available retail to an end user? And what might the cost be? Sure, yeah. So we, um, we're we actively building out our distribution network. And depending on where people are in the country, we do have distribution set up okay. all across the country, the West Coast, Midwest, uh, Northeast, and Southeast now. and. Uh, as we speak, it's becoming more readily available from a local lumber yard, uh, any place that's going to sell you your wood. Um, and then we even have some plastics wholesalers also uh, selling the material. But um, And in general, from a cost perspective, you're going to find yourself, it's going to depend on the retail location. But uh, you know, like Matt mentioned earlier on, it's less expensive than high-density polyethylene and right in line with some of the competitive PVC products in the market. And right now, too, even with a lot of the changes to the market and allocations and supply chain issues, we have found that, um, you know, vertical grain cedar has exceeded our price uh, for a while. But even now, knotty grain cedar is starting to exceed the price of our material when you talk about dimensional trim. Wow. Yeah. And that's another reason why we got to just jump on this. OK, good. The echo is gone. Um, yeah. So I mean, said that he used the force to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get Stuart Copeland a lot more than Luke Skywalker. I like the Luke Skywalker one, but uh, yeah, that's pretty I get cool. I, I get Stuart Copeland, the drummer from the Police, a lot. But um, so you know that's another reason why we are, regardless of cost, if you really think about it, regardless of what COVID did in the supply chain, if once you learn about this product, it feels like a no brainer. Right. And one of the things I've learned from business, and this is why I tell my team. Just because price has gone up doesn't mean we're just going to raise our prices. This is when we get, we're get we forced to get out there and learn about new products, new vendors, create new relationships. It just makes us better. And that's how, again, I came across this product. But now, with lumber prices so high, it, 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 just, it just makes sense to me. I'm just, again, the biggest reason for this conversation is, especially that people, you know, there's a lot of people watching live right now, but it'll be uploaded later. And there's going to be a lot of people going, ah, where's the high density? Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to take that hard, but I'm doing everything I can to make sure we educate people why we're making this change. And it's not to cheap out. It's not to cut costs. If anything, I'm adding costs, but I'm going to make a better product. And I, you know, I'm not a tree hugging hippie, but I always say, be smart. Mm -hmm. We are so stupid in our waste. We're, we're, we're horrible. We're absolutely horrible. Why not just be smart about it? And I just love that here is this material designed to protect this little seed. And now we get to still use it in a product now to protect the chickens. And the other thing, too, I just want to make a note, not to get into this conversation, but I forgot about this. And uh, Chandler mentioned in the very beginning, this rice hull is also used as an animal bedding. And we know we talk a lot about how much we love industrial hemp. Uh, he mentioned that to me the first day we talked, I think towards the end of the conversation, I was like, uh, uh, what and uh, we got to look back into that mm -hmm. and, and and either you know just at least offer it as another option I, I can see how it could work really really well um, Chandler I, I we are running out of time I hate to uh, have to cut this off because this is such a great conversation you're great at what you do I just want to remind people you you are from the manufacturer you are not the person that uh, an end user, even myself, would come buy from. He won't even let me buy from him. I have to go to his suppliers, but it just makes sense right. in that supply chain. But I love going to the people that 
This is their product, just like the coops are our product. They know it in and out. Um, they believe in it. One of the questions I did want to ask before we go is, how long has it been in the States? And then where did it originate from? I believe there's a little bit of history there. Yeah, so the, the original technology goes back about 15 years internationally. Um, we are the sole manufacturer of the compound that we use to, I kind of joke about that being the, the pancake batter that we use to make the boards. Uh, but we, we are the, the exclusive licensee for 30 years and patent protection for North America and Mexico uh, to manufacture the compound and the boards um, here in, like I said, North America and Mexico. Uh, but yeah, the, the original technology dates back about 15 years. It started um, in outdoor furniture it was unfoamed, right? So unfoamed, like you talk about with um, some of those higher density, like the HDPE that you talk about the expansion and contraction force and the weight associated with those and the hardness. For us, um, the material that we're making with the with the introduction of air, the foam product that's lightweight, uh, has lower expansion and contraction and lower cost because of that is what we um, are focusing on and have focused on. But, you know, we've been our mill in Mississippi is 200,000 square feet. It's been uh, in, it's, let's see, we're about three years old at this point in the US. Um, but yeah, the technology itself is, uh, is proven worldwide across a, a variety of climates uh, dating back about 15 years. Yeah, because I often joke to people is, it's funny, it seems like the States is the last place to get on board with something with like a new technology. Uh, but we always hopefully perfect yeah. it and knock it out of the park. Uh, no, Jan, yeah, you, we, we, sorry, we got, you, you said it. I just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, I'm, as you know, I don't know if everybody else knows, but I'm, I'm actually north of Boston and I, and I get a kick out of it when you say that it's a no brainer because we do around here, we say it's a no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I, 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 would, I would tell you that the, the conversation that we have, um, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm honest about this, it's why I joined this company. And when I saw this material for the first time, I was just, I was blown away as well, right? Having known everything that's out there and, and I live in a 300 year old house in Ipswich, Massachusetts, and, and I've gut renovated it over the last 15 years we've been working on this. And, and since introducing, being introduced to this material and then jumping on board, I was so excited about it. Um, it's an innovation and an evolution in these wood alternatives and just construction in general that like you say, no brainer, but it just makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. It's what everybody's been waiting for. And, and we do say, we say with everything else that's out there and the story that this has and the upcycle rice halls, the performance attributes, the look and feel, what you can do with it, why wouldn't you use it? Right. And I think that's a fair question. And so we are excited about it that, you know, as we as we continue to expand the the wholesale and the and the distribution and the and the dealership footprint across the country, um, we do know, we, you know, we do know that this is going to be the next step in, in the process of building materials. So I appreciate the opportunity for, to speak with you and your group. And, and this is exciting. And, and it, when I first talked to you and we talked about what you build and what you make, it makes perfect sense to me and including putting the rice hulls down for bedding. I mean, I think that's a, a great idea and exciting, but, um, thank you for having me as well. No, nah, yeah, no, you are welcome. And thank you. We'll have to continue the conversation on again, because, um, there is a lot of comments coming in. I did want to make sure Kristen's over here monitoring them. If I got it. Okay. I got it covered. Okay, good. Um, I think uh, there's going to be a lot more questions coming up, but I know, I mean, my, it, it's not a matter of if we're going to do it at this point. It's just a matter of when, and we're working out just a couple more minor details, and I'm, I'm just easing it in. And I really, what I'm trying to do is get our customers, our especially our potential customers, excited about it. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I'm about to build a house, so I'm going to use it. Oh, that's I'm right. Sorry. You're right. All right, Chandler, thank Great. you so thank much. You. you have a great weekend. Happy Easter, all that good stuff. Stay warm up there. Yeah, thank you. See yeah. you. You're welcome. Bye. Um, all right. Wow. So he's good. Yeah. I love these smart people. I love these smart people that, you know, when I first had my first conversation with him, I was just absolutely blown away. And I kept saying to and myself, it's, it's just better that he has a good product to sell too. That just makes it easier, doesn't it? Well, it absolutely does. Yeah, yeah just I, like us. I yeah. hated when I had to sell pest control. Yeah, I hated it because I I loved the job as an exterminator, but selling it, scaring people, I hate it. But when you can sell something you love and you can pick up on it right away, man, I'm so happy again that we're able to uh, meet new vendors, new suppliers. So, every need more tea. Um, and, and I wanted to thank your mom. No, this tea is so good, especially that I'm trying to cut back on my coffee. 
Um, if for whatever reason you're joining us late, that was Chandler from Modern Mill. The reason for today's conversation is we have been playing with the idea of switching out from the high density polyethylene that we use inside our hen houses. And it is a great product, but there's always room for improvement. And we're always improving. And this is something I came across uh, because high density was not going to be available. Uh, and I, when I learned more about this product, I was just like, this is a no brainer, but it is, it, it does cost more. It absolutely does cost more, but it really, I think, again, just makes sense. So please leave your questions and comments down below if you have any thoughts about that. Um, how are the comments looking over there? And then we haven't even started, it's 12. Yeah, I've been, I've been on top of them. Okay, any, uh, any, any, anything good? Anything you want to add? Are we, are we? Um, Somebody's are, chinchillas might like that rice hole bedding. I just cleaned out my chicken coop for the first time in five or six years, and it, it needs some bedding, so. I don't know. We I don't could, know if we, I can get some of that. Yeah, God, it's speaking for about that. For testing bedding. purposes. Wink, wink. Oh. Free. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. All right. Well, before it's too late, I well, let's let's go through some comments real quick. But I do definitely want to start uh, YouTube Chicken here in a little bit. I think there's been some more. I think we could do that. You want to start? You want to start the uh, YouTube Chicken? <laughs> Oh, God, I love it. I love it. Look at that. Boom. Bam. Just like we know what we're doing. Do you like the ticker going across the top? Everyone out there, do you guys like that ticker? Something different? You probably didn't even notice until just now. No, I noticed it when you were playing with it. Is it driving right? you crazy? It's okay. <laughs> uh, Ingrid, we're going to, um, uh, let's see. I can't remember. I'm going to screw it all up. Um, let's see here. We can go back to, oh, you know what I was going to do? is I did have something picked out just for, it's our YouTube channel. I was like, we're talking about YouTube. Why, we, why don't we go to the YouTube channel? Ingrid, are you there? How are you today? I think she's there, Ingrid. I see her. Where is she? Did I mute her on accident? I'm not sure. I did, she's, uh-huh, yes, Matt, you did. You got, you got to unmute me if you want me to talk. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's, there you go. There we go. All right, unmuted, Ingrid. Ingrid, how are you today? I'm good. How are you guys? Excellent. What did you think about that? I think. Well, I'm excited about it. You know, I'm all about upcycling and sustainability. Um, there was a couple of questions that I wish we had gotten to while he was here. Um, someone asked about how long it would last. And seeing how it's pest free, weather resistant, fire resistant, I would imagine it would last longer than wood. Is that not correct? Yeah, so here's what was happening. I'm really trying to stay under your timeline. <laughs> and I really oh, stop. I, don't I, I blame was, me. <laughs> <laughs> I was in awe. Don't, I, mean, don't, I was just in don't awe at everything me. he was saying and it occurred to me that I think that was a good introduction. And those are the yeah. questions I wanted to ask. And I think what we should do is maybe set up a time soon. I wasn't sure how interested people were gonna be. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments come in and a lot of people watching. So that tells me they're on board. I hope they understand where we're coming from and they agree with the change. So we should maybe uh, set up a time, maybe later this week to address those comments directly. I'm sure I can have Chandler back on um and, and talk yeah what about we can do is i'll i can grab all those questions that people have and then give them to you so you can ask chandler okay yeah because i think it's important because i think they're good questions and i think they're important um, uh absolutely yeah so, so youtube chicken police all right what do i got for you today <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about the Michigan Coop, which is right there on the top. Well, right it's on here. the top there. Beautiful Michigan. Yeah. Um, so Blue Collar Mark said, I think I'll pocket the money and head over to the grocery store for a dozen eggs. <laughs> it's the same thing over and you know, over. Why not? I know. I just had to. Um, and somebody else said they're from northern Minnesota and the weasels we have here look like they can dig beneath the predator apron 
Yeah, um, I, I, I saw plan that on building one. and ordering a coop from you in the future, and I love the videos and seeing everyone. They're awesome and beautiful. But we, I, and I do get that too with um, other burrowing things, either going past the predator apron. Yeah, a absolutely, or, and we have a great solution for that. So again, the predator apron is primarily designed to keep your large predators out. And if you have a high pressure of small lure predators and or pests, you can just do like what we did in, where's, the, right here, right here's the video. Alabama. It was right mm -hmm. here, right? Um, yes. The chicken. And I'm sure somewhere we showed off. To the beginning. Yeah, right here. Beginning. Back in my skinnier days. Um, oh, boom, look at that. There's a shot Yes, right he there. got it right there. So if you guys can see that, hopefully you can, uh, you see the predator apron, the two inch by three inch, 14 gauge, gosh, I don't know what else is I got a, oof, I'm pretty sure yeah, 14 gauge, PVC coated fencing. It does a phenomenal job of keeping your larger predators out. If you have a concern about weasels, mice, rats, anything digging underneath, and in this case snakes, and we dub this now the snake guard, just add additional hardware cloth and we sell additional hardware cloth for that exact reason and we put it right on top of the fencing i can't think there's actually a good or bad which, which with what which whichever one you decide to put on first uh we just found it easier in this one time application to put it right on top and i don't see any harm um uh, with doing that and that's all you got and the do. important the important part is using the black PVC coated hardware cloth because a regular galvanized hardware cloth would probably oh it's shot in a couple of years under yeah yeah that's a great point yeah PVC 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 get get the PVC coating it's not to look fancy uh, when it comes to the ground it's to protect it so that it lasts I mean it's yeah. galvanized core it's a it's a hot it's galvanized core uh, you know it has the zinc on there to prevent it from rusting but even that gives in after a while but the PVC protects it and allows it to last for a very long time you know um, oh do we got a tea tea coming sweet um okay all right no big deal there all right i have another this question's come up in a couple of different videos comments um and it was about anchoring the coops for the wind and i, I think you spoke about it uh, another time about if they're out in the open yeah, if, versus, if you, listen, like if you're position chicken, of the coop. Yeah, if your chicken coop's going to be out in a big area, let's see. Do I got something here? Oh, look at here. Okay, so if the wind comes in this way, hits the front of the hen house, goes up and gets under your roof, it's going to lift it up and take off like a parachute. So one, if you're in a high wind area, this is the one time I would say you might have to turn your painting around and not have the best visual look. Uh, you know, you don't want to hang your painting backwards, right? Uh, but I've always said, you position your chicken coop so that it looks the best from where you're going to view it the most. But if you're in those high wind areas and you're worried about it, just turn it around. It'll still look beautiful. But have the wind, let's see, come in this way. All right, hitting the back of the hen house and then wrapping around, not coming in underneath and picking it up when it hits the front of the hen house going up underneath the roof. Uh, and then after that, of course, anchor it down. There's so many options for anchoring it down. There was actually a great video. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it. When we were in uh, Florida with Maria, uh, we had to rent a special tool to put these huge hurricane spikes down. They're four foot long. They have like this auger spiral cutting thing that goes in. And those, once they're in, they do not want to come out. So just use your best judgment. But again, if you're in a high wind area, anchor it down and have hurricane straps that you've used too right well yeah we've heard we've used well hurricane straps a lot of times are for your roofing system um, right and there's hurricane stakes and hurricane straps are definitely very helpful in your normal framing construction of homes ours are is better because they're all screwed in and are what are called really freeze blocks but we call them fillers that go in between the trusses screw in with a total of four screws sideways and there's another total of six screws going down better than hurricane strap so yeah i mean and, you know to that point if this coop was to pick up and take off it's not going to blow apart in pieces and we have proof of that we really need to find that picture uh, it is somewhere deep in the archives where a coop tipped over 
and blew into the field and the customer couldn't believe nothing broke it's a little bit of metal bent on the ends how are we looking on comments someone said why do we need both both what i'm not sure what that was that was two minutes ago and someone said why not just the hardware claw Maybe same person oh so for the apron oh okay and then non reminds everyone stainless steel staples fasten it properly yeah anytime you are fastening into pressure treated that is a mistake a lot of people make when you're fastening to the pressure treated down here below use either hot dip galvanized or stainless steel the the treatment the chemicals inside that pressure treated lumber to preserve it will corrode the metal fastener um, so I see what she's saying why not just put down the half-inch hardware cloth and be done um, right. you know I would say you can I just think about you're this coyote and <laughs> what well, should I do a filter? Is there a coyote filter? What's Inger's laughing? Um, I just, when you can use your weight and, and pounce down on something or start digging, I just want a little bit beefier. They, they have a lot more to their advantage, I feel, when they're trying to dig down versus trying to go into a chicken coop. So yeah. I just like to back it up with the fencing material. Do you think the uh, vinyl, oh, you're using both? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I was making tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so yeah, use pressure treated, uh, har approved hardware. Uh, and there's other brands out there now too that have a special coating, like Tapcons, for example. So there are a lot of comments. I want to make sure uh, we, we get to go through them. It is 106. Uh, do we have any more yeah, with you you, YouTube Chicken? Do we have any more with YouTube Chicken? Um, there's, there's, there's just, you know, the nice stuff. If you want to hear the nice stuff. Well, I, I definitely um, want to hear the nice stuff. But before I forget, if I may, um, mm -hmm. I saw Mr. Fishing Matt Ryan's pictures of his chicken coop. Yeah. Aren't they uh, great? Wow. Can we share them right now? Are they are they shareable? Should we? Let, let's wait till next time. Um, and I almost would love to have Fishing Matt Ryan on. I really want to be able to thank our viewers mm -hmm. face to face. I've mm -hmm. only talked to him once over the phone, and the reason why I had to talk to him was uh, we did something bad, and uh, but we fixed it. And I think Fishing Matt Ryan is extremely happy with that, and would just you know if Fishing Matt Ryan is watching right now, which it looks like he made a couple comments, see if he would be willing to come on. Mm -hmm. And I would love for him to talk about, he captured a lot of pictures of his uh, assembly and his coop. And I really love what he did with his background with the exterior illumination. Yeah, yeah the lighting was nice. He, says go ahead, he said so. to go ahead. Do you know where the link, the link in the email? I, I'll, yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll have him on. I would love to have him on and talk about it. Because I, I just, I yeah. love it, I absolutely love it. You know, and he bought one of our chicken coops. Uh, so he didn't build his own from scratch. And, and of course, I love that too. But here is a customer, and I love when they capture the story, uh, in this case with pictures. And his final setup was just incredible. And, you know, one of the hot topics lately uh, that have come our way that I really probably should just do a video and almost a class on this is our coops are built out of wood. It is organic material. And yes, we buy the best dimensional lumber we can but it's not always perfect. And there's been times, it just depends on the mill, where it's coming from, it's, you know, it's just been a nightmare. There's been some rough lumber. And it's this choice between, do we keep having customers wait or do we send it out? And I think what happens is as woodworkers, we know how we can take a piece of wood and make it beautiful real quick. Yeah. And I think we're taking that for granted and we should do a quick class, even right here on the table, um, showing here's what to do. Okay, so you might have some raised grain from the blades as it's surfacing it to get it down to its final dimension. Okay, no big deal. Hit it with a sander. You're not trying to sand it to where it's gone. Then if you do that, you're gonna have a big dimple and a, a sore wrist and a, a bunch of wasted sandpaper, but you just knock down the high part and then you gotta finish it just like you would a car, if you will. Um, or you're drywalling, but we use a lot of wood filler or caulk, depends on how big it is, and you just, and put a knife over I like it. the idea of some classes. I think that would be good. You know, I noticed when we were, in, I think it was in Wilmington, I mean, we were going live on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, Ingrid. Yes. Viewers, everyone out there, please. I would oh, love we're to- almost 10, <laughs> We're almost at 10,000. We're almost at 10,000. I would love to 
I've always, is it possible to acknowledge, would, would, we, would we know our 10,000th follower? Is that possible? Uh, I, maybe. That's almost like Ingrid yesterday. <laughs> I, I did I an awful, oh. awful April Fool's joke on Ingrid yesterday, and that just reminded me, she's like, uh, uh, let me choose my words carefully. <laughs> Imagine what that was. No, I don't. Oh. I don't. I don't know. I know you can. <laughs> don't even start. Um, well, if you're not already following us on Instagram, please go over and follow us on Instagram. Yeah, you need Here's to follow us on Instagram. We need nine click people. the stories. Click. Right? Click the um. Click our logo and see the lovely story I did for Modern Mill show today. See, we got this one. It's gonna keep going. So this is um the stories. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's a way to see the 10,000th person. I had no idea. All you got to do, see, now I'm on my laptop, I'm not on my iPhone. Um, so I know on my iPhone, that looks awesome. No, you did good. Let's do that one more time. Um, yeah, because that was the last minute. He had to get permission from his marketing department. Would you consider using dimensional lumber from them? So I didn't know if I should bring that up or not. And one of my very first questions after learning about Acre is, oh, how much is it for a two by four? Yeah. They, will, they don't make two by fours. They are looking into making two by fours or dimensional lumber out of Acre. But mention, remember how we talked about the air? Mm -hmm. It is porous. It's not structurally, it's not right now designed to be for strength. Oh, yeah. You can get, definitely get away with deck boards, but your floor joists are, are going to do a lot of the... Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I was going to share something. Oh, okay. It's in the other room. I tell you, you're being a heck of a trooper. Uh, how are you feeling? You all right? Ooh, okay. <laughs> She's walking around like a 90-year-old lady. Poor thing. Um, all right. So th what they did say is that they're going to have... And this is going to make it very expensive, but it, they say it is going to come, but they have to insert rods, like a rebar, some type of metal pipe inside, like bones in our body. And I, I just don't think at that time it's going to be worth it. Solid Doug Fur does a phenomenal job. It just stinks how expensive it is. But when it comes to replacing the high density and the siding, oh, this, is, this looks like fun. Um, so that time may come. But anyways, please go. If you're not already following us on Instagram, please go over there. We would love to break 10,000 because I've been told something special happens. Not even one person refresh that. Well, most likely everyone that's watching us right now are over there, and they're probably getting bored right now. We got to get back to the chicken and chicken coop stuff. Uh, oh, we got one. We got one more. Oh, no. I, I just wanted to be able to like maybe. I'm doing my own testing, and I, I got this kit from. Uh, there is now these products that have um, aluminum and wood. Yeah. Not cheap though. Yeah, I know. When that, I asked the same thing, are these dimensional products like dimensional wood? And they said no. Same thing. Yeah, that is a tricky part. I'm sure one day, you know what's going to happen one day. But it's all sorts of interesting technology. And same with the deck boards. See, it's aluminum. Yeah. I mean, that wood, would be. Resin. I mean, I could see that. I mean, aluminum can be awesome. Yeah, it seems really sturdy, right? Um, I would think so. Uh, it, it, it all comes down to the joinery. And when you join aluminum, right. you either have a lot of screws or you have a lot of welding. And welding aluminum is a nightmare. It's light, so. It is light. Um, all right. So anyways, yes, we would love to be able to break 10,000. I believe we're allowed into like this VIP room now in the world of Instagram social media. Right, Ingrid? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. So then you can get your, like, <laughs> your, your freebies. You can have. We, uh, no, we will be. You'll be an influencer. Yeah, you have influencer <laughs> status. So then you can have right. your own freebies. We, we, we don't already have influencer status? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we do uh, in, our, in our, our mind. So, in your realm. But not according to Instagram. Yeah. Do you want to go through realm. the you want to go through the comments oh, real I've, quick? I've been looking at them. But, um, well, let, let's go. What, what questions do we have? Because Ingrid did mention there were some things that they wanted to ask uh, Aker, and we'll have to do another show with them. All right. Bobby, when it comes to backyard chickens in the suburbs, allowed four hens, no roosters. I normally have a landscaping company lay out lawn treatments, fertilizer, preventatives, etc. about once every two to three months. My hens free range and eat bugs, grass, etc. 
Who, who's freaking out right now? Was that you? Was that Ingrid? No. What's going I am. On? That's okay. me. That's uh, me. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> Sorry. my hands free range and eat bugs, grass, etc. The landscaping company assured me that I'm safe so long as I keep them in their run for 24 to 48 hours before letting them mm. free range. They said it. They said <laughs> it's the same with waiting until my dog can go out. My worries are that somehow the chemicals will end up harming the chickens and eggs thoughts question mark i love that question. i'm not gonna talk i'm I not would, gonna talk <laughs> well i i you know what i'll let you go first because here's the deal well, you're no. the bug guy what do I, you think well from that perspective yeah. i have a lot of thoughts and i Green. tell you Commercial they training. come from my experience as an exterminator God, and i feel like a hypocrite because there <laughs> is a time and place, I think, for insecticides. In my case, we use insecticides when you have herbicides. Um, you know, one could argue how pesticides have saved us from malaria. You know, a lot of these countries that um, are very proactive with it, where malaria has killed millions of people. Um, I just worry. I mean, think about all those people that are now have won those lawsuits with Monsanto's, yeah. with Roundup. I hated herbicides. I hated when we had to apply herbicides. Because one, it was stupid. I was like, go get some goats or, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to really get into all that. But I can tell you the label, which you're taught, anytime you're applying any type of pesticide, the label's the law. You need to take, let's pretend this, ooh, honey. Let's pretend this honey bottle all that fine print if this is a pesticide label you got to read that that's the law and on there it tells you I, don't mm. you love having sticky fingers mm, oh that's yummy is it'll tell you it is safe after 24 hours to allow your dogs which is usually the case for your pets to get on there i don't buy that i just yeah, I, that I, that's, scares that's, the that's crap out sus. of me it's sus there's, there's also been say. there's also there's also been studies um with tufts university and a couple of others that have linked um, the use of different lawn chemicals to cancer in dogs, which is something I've suspected for the past 20 years. But um, there are actual studies with colleges, and 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 a chicken's a lot smaller animal than a dog. I just, I, I look. I have an organic farm, so I, I don't. I just, I don't think you should sacrifice. I don't. I don't know. I would yeah, not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use it. I, I, especially every that. two weeks. That's that's a lot. All Look right. at all the bugs that you're not that are not living. Look at all the things going on underneath the soil that are being affected. It's not just about grass. Yeah, the whole ecosystem. That that is a subject that I would love to spend uh, a show on because it is near and dear to my heart. I have seen firsthand how much pesticides are abused and misused, even by professionals. That you're supposed to be licensed. Uh, you're supposed to go in there and and just you know. I, they call it IPM. You're going to do the integrated pest management, which means it's a systematic approach to dealing with a pest problem where you're not supposed to just shoot from the hip first. Well, let me tell you what. Exterminators or even pesticide applicators, they're not paid by the hour usually. And a lot of them are like, it's called spray and pray. You just spray it, move mm -hmm. on to the next job. You don't care. That drove me insane. That's why I got out of the business. I always said I wanted to start my own pest consultation business mm -hmm. doing exactly this, where I want to be telling people, here's what you need to think, coming from someone that was on that side, and I'm not trying to talk badly. I mean, I got still a bunch of friends that are in the, in the extermination business, but I just don't trust these companies. You know, you got DuPont, you got Bayer, uh, or the two that really pop out in my mind that are the makers of this product. And then, you know, they talk about this technology for, you know, I'll never forget my, my, my uncle uh, who I, uh, grew corn. And I would ask him, because he had a pesticide application license, and he did you know, these huge treatments, and he would tell me how he didn't like it, even though on the label it says when you apply it and it gets onto the blade, the, the, the grass of the, you know, the, the plant of the corn, and once it's dry, after 24 hours, it's safe to go in there and pick it. Well, here's what he told me. I'll never forget this. He goes, Matt, we go and pick the corn in the morning, and you're walking through there in the dew, the moisture on the plants is taking that pesticide residue and now it's transferring from the plant, from the corn, onto your skin and now you're getting dermal toxicity. Mm. And he could feel it. 
So Bobby, what I'm saying, I guess what I would say is, me personally, I'm not a fan of it. I love biological pest control, like Ingrid was saying a little bit. We want those bugs. There are benefits. I know, though, I'm, I, I'm a typical guy. I like to see a nice, beautiful green grass, but there's other ways of doing it. Nothing really grows grass greener. I mean, chicken droppings are phenomenal. So, you know, th there's a lot to that subject. I would just, I would just be very, very careful. Um, so I hope that answers that. How large or big is the cupola for the six by eight hen house, the height, width, and how do you flash it? Uh, um, listen, I, I don't know the dimensions off the top of my head. If you're building your own coop, just build it whatever size you want. Um, it is tricky. If you're gonna flash it, flash it. I definitely recommend that. Um, read your COVID note about being up and running without restrictions. How are you on catching up on the back orders? What does that mean, Matthew? Flesh. That they, they read it. They read our COVID note. That's been you there for over a year. Regarding COVID. Okay. You're behind because of COVID. And he's asking, is that still the case? And I answered them. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what was the <laughs> so answer? Don't worry about it. The answer is that we have been, um, you know, making up orders since for the past year. We've been behind. We're, we're, we're cranking them out. Homestead has, Engineering, are been, you are you building yeah. a factory in Florida? No. Um, thought about it. <laughs> Love Florida. Um, I am building a Carolina coop and it's going good. You have the most awesome coops. I would like to send you pics so you can give me feedback. Absolutely. Uh, Fisher Matt Ryan, happy birthday, Kenzie. Jesus loves you, and he died on the cross for you today. Well, I appreciate that. Happy Easter for everyone that is into that. Um, here's Niner, keeping your gutters clean, tree litter, and help keep your rain barrel and water bar clean. Yeah, that'll keep your water bar clean. Just worry about what's going into your gutters. That's the most important part. Um, how long until you are building coops with the acre paneling? Prototype. When, when are you going to get your material? Here, here's here's what's here's what's holding us up the biggest uh we've gotten to the point now it's just a matter of when to implement it and we don't know when to implement it because now poor evan who's already got a mountain mm -hmm. of uh, drawings that he has to do uh, he's, he's busting out some beautiful drawings and right now he has the responsibility of redoing the manual so if we change to this acre product i feel very confident we can just put an amendment in there telling people, hey, here's the manual. You're going to see high density. You're going to see the regular plywood siding. But we have eliminated that. And now we have this acre. Put it on the same way, but well, don't get so hung up is on Is a one-quarter inch sheet going to be pretty much equal to one-quarter inch sheet? So it's, it's three-eighths. So that'll be equal. But what happens is the beauty of the acre product is because that's waterproof. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have the high density for the side wall. It goes back to basically okay. the original American coop, right. where we try to eliminate the high density. The layers, to, yeah. The layers, yes, exactly, to, to get the cost down. But people were not happy about it. Like, we want the high density. Mm -hmm. And so we gave it to them. Um, it's a matter of making sure that the manual is going to be OK. How are you holding up? I'm OK. All right. If you want, I can go through the comments. I know it's already 123. And again, I hate that we don't get a chance. I've been going through them. I feel like you're doing my job all over. Well, here. then I. Uh, but there is a new one here that I saw pop pop up about someone has a shed. They want to split it in half, hens and ducks. Okay, what about I, it? Yeah, I don't think any. I don't see any. This this one here. I don't see any problem with doing that. What do you think? Can I read it? Let me, let me see here. Just read it. Here, go ahead and read it. I have an old shed that I would like to convert into a hen house shed would you like, like you guys have done i was wondering if i could split it in half and have one part ducks and the other for chickens i don't see a problem with that at yeah. all and there's a couple ways you can do it but there are I t so one way we've done it is we've had the duck house below the hen house mm -hmm. and the idea is that the hen houses or the chickens will go up to the hen house and then the ducks are going to go down into the duck house and everyone's going to be happy right but it doesn't know animals don't always do what you want them to do Next thing you know, you got the chickens laying eggs down in the duck house, not near the egg hutch. And then you got this crazy duck 
wonder duck going up the ramp where they're not supposed to, but they do, and they go hang out in the hen house. So it, it can be tricky. Um, we've had pretty good success keeping them separated. I don't know, I can't speak to the ones where we've done them together. But that was the idea to put it down below. And I always worry, you gotta be careful where you're gonna create spots that chickens are gonna go, oh, I wanna lay eggs down here because it's maybe darker. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're laying all over the place here. Ooh, how about as a rumor? Ooh. What rumor of a factory in North Carolina? Is there a rumor? Lisa Haymaker. Haymaker, what a great last name, Haymaker. Um, you want to keep reading through some more? And then other people are saying that asbestos used to be called considered safe. You know, that used to be the... So when you were talking about all the pesticides, herbicides. Exactly. You know what's safe. I, would just would, I wouldn't use them unless I absolutely had to, like for termites. You know, something that's pretty serious. And yeah. people have commented about how few bugs I have here. I mean, you never see a bug inside the house, yet my uh, uh, housekeeping is not that great. You know, bottom line is, if you're worried about chemical uh, or, or, or a pesticide, you probably should be. But the one thing that is true, and, and, and this kind of relates to, again, my friend that almost died from alcoholism, and now he's living this life, and his diet is, if I can't shoot it or grow it, it is not on my plate. Mm -hmm. You almost could say the same thing about what you're doing outside. How about bake it? Shoot it, grow it, or bake it? We gotta add in baking? Yeah. Well. Mom, you wanna say hi? No. <laughs> oh. um, you know, I just, I'm a fan of biological pest control. I just, I, 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 you know, I just, these companies worry me and that's such a great point. And that's, I think about that all the time. What, what are we gonna find out in 20 years about these cell phones constantly up here on us? Or we're all gonna be dying of brain tumors. Or our hips. Or our hips, right, you know? Anyways, okay, uh, what's some of these other comments? What's the lead time on the American? Again, right now the official answer is. Uh, Ingrid answered that. She said oh, she did? said October. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, um, Michael Olson says, I heard you talking about providing plans for your coops in one of your last videos. Any chance I can get plans for the three gang egg hutch? We, we, we are gonna sell plans once we make this transition uh, of splitting up the company and we're gonna have the room to be able to get on video, step by step. And you're splitting up just the operational, the manufacturing, not splitting it into two different subsidiaries or whatever. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, we're still gonna be Carolina Coops yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, that is when I want to, I mean, we're even thinking about building a studio in there mm -hmm. where we're gonna be able to film us building a chicken coop. But I also even, I wanna and go- And your woodworking classes? In my baking classes? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, n not right now, I guess is the answer. I apologize. It's just, it's- But we do have a good tip for him. What's that? Uh, have, the, have the door flip down like you do it. Because we used to actually make them so that the door, the, the metal roof actually flipped up to collect your eggs. And no, I have no, no. one of those first models in my backyard and the chickens do not like it. They that do not is, like it at all. That is right. We should get that on video. Yeah. You have the original cottage coop. Right, and at, it's, it, they do not like being approached from above. And also, I've got to hold the lid open with my head when I'm collecting <laughs> eggs. And, and a flashlight in your mouth. And a flashlight in my mouth or the headlamp, you know. So it's, that, it, there's a lot of reasons why that's not... We need to get a video of that. That is such a great point. So that's just a tip for him. Yeah, right? that was one of the original, that was the first set of egg hutches I ever bought. It's, it's a big no-no. I just did it because I thought that's the only way you can do it, but then we had to drop down door. Um, also, speaking of egg hutches, you know, we need to be able to get that video of something that Kristen has done. I don't know, if I officially mentioned um, something you did with your neighbors? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, I like think we should do that. Um, and then I also have- You've created- I'm testing whoa, whoa, these things what, what out. What do you got here? I'm testing these out, the mats. All right. All right, well, here, here, bring them in here. So, wh what do you got here? I got it off of Amazon. I don't know what they're called. They're shedding, but uh, 
It'll just go into the industrial the, dust this, pan This later. is Aspen wood fibers. Okay. All right. And we've had a lot of customers say they love this. And it's just a different way to have nesting material go inside your hen house. Or I'm sorry, inside your egg hutch. And how's it been going using it? Well, I have it side by side next to coastal hay, which is available here in North Carolina. What is coastal hay? It's what we use to feed horses. Okay. Um, so it's not straw, it's hay. It's kind of a fine hay. Um, uh, and, and they prefer the hay. Now, I don't know if it's because I have been using hay and they're creatures of habit and they don't like change. So that could be the case. But side by side, they're preferring the hay. Now, one problem with the hay is they're kicking it out of the nest. Um, you know, I have a, a set of nesting boxes that you made that are open uh, and they're able to kick that out and they do, they kick that out right now. So, and this doesn't get kicked out. So I'm still testing, but that's my preliminary observation. Yeah, it's fascinating because it's one of those encouraging their instincts moments right, right. which you always speak of. And I guess they do pull this out. Like what, they definitely didn't like it when it was all compacted, but right, they do. This is you're, you're pulling it out, that's for sure. Uh, am I going to be the one that has to clean yeah, all this up? Yeah, maybe I should have fluffed it when I put it in there. But you can see the chickens going in there and making their own nest, and um, they were using the hay. I, I didn't fluff it up, but I see that I, I should have probably done that so that they could pick it up. Pick it up, and I didn't realize actually how how fluffed it. I mean, how many layers? I like can't it. wait till we come out with a material we've been experimenting with up at the R and D farm up in New York. And um, once I get back, there's one of the first things I'm going to jump on. But I guess they can. I mean, this is getting kicked out on us right now. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what, Mom? Yeah, Mom's saying that maybe we should make pull it apart and, and help them make their little bowl. Mom's been here this week. Yeah, that's doing funny. Doing all my animal chores. The guy said, I just got acre brain. Um, what's the life expectancy? All right. Um, Costs. You can try it on a coop at my house. Uh, here comes the hard question. What do the other 17 products in it off gas? So, well, we asked about that, right? Well, we did, but I was thinking the same thing. I'm thinking, okay, what are those other 17 products? And they may not want to talk about them, but you would think. Well, then you're giving away your recipe for your pancake ex batter, right? Exactly. Um, but there has to be an MSDS to it. And that should tell you the end all be all. So maybe what we'll do is we'll And pull. maybe you guys shouldn't have been testing it by chewing on it. Hey, that was Mackenzie. She's still, no, Mackenzie left. Um, Ingrid's still she's there. She's probably got work to do. Yeah, she, she's got work to do. Um, you could just 3D print the coop. I was actually starting to say that. Pretty soon after, you know, we were talking about the dimensional lumber mm -hmm. and using acre, pretty soon you're just gonna print your own chicken coop. Which actually gave me an idea this morning. You know what popped up in my head this morning? What? I don't know why. Uh, it seems like some of the, I don't want to say the greatest ideas, but ideas pop in my head when I first wake up. And people are always asking about plans. You know what I would love to do? Is go back to how it all started, what we used to do, and that is dive into a dumpster, find materials, usually pallets, and use it to build a chick coop. I thought it'd be so much fun mm -hmm. to teach people how to build the world's best chicken coop using pallet wood. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm more interested in yeah. doing that and then and documenting that, maybe drawing plans. Because there you can, just because it's That's pallet. back to foraging, right? I love it. My poor kid's like, no, daddy, get out of there. <laughs> you don't need to do that anymore. I'm like, you, you kids don't know what you're missing. Oh yeah, my kids love it. Cat bombing, yeah, Irma. Irma got on top of the uh, table. Do a little cat bombing. Um, yes, cost with a four by eight sheet on the coop. Here, here's what I can tell you: that acre product is expensive. It's not as expensive as the high density polyethylene, but it's definitely more expensive than plywood. But plywood is uh, again going through the roof. Um, does anybody else think Chandler kind of looks like Skywalker? I didn't notice that, but he did. I don't know the guy's name. Uh, I forget the, the, the actor's name that looks like Skywalker. Mike Hamlin. Mike Hamlin. I'm glad you know the name. Um, all right, so we're coming up. Oh, it's already 134. We need to figure out, are we going to stick to this time slot? Can we go to another time? I'm not sure what your thoughts are there. And there are so many great comments and 
you know, when we did Radio Chicken, we did two hours like nothing. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone wants to keep it under an hour, but when you got a good guest speaker like Chandler was. Yeah, my sister is about to bust in the door right here. Oh, all right, yeah, and there's a sister. Did and you bring a chicken for show and tell? Oh, yeah, we don't have any chickens. Your yard? Should we go get it? <laughs> all right, I guess that's our cue. We should probably wrap it up. It has been an extra half an hour. How are you holding up? You did pretty good? Yeah. I don't have to feel so bad. All right, awesome. Hey, guys, again, thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, please go follow us over at Instagram. Um, and also make sure you give us a like on Facebook, even though I don't, I'm not sure how big we are on Facebook anymore or care about that. Uh, but thank you so much. Leave your questions and comments down below if you're watching this after the live show. Other than that, have a great weekend. Happy Easter. And we will see you guys next, next week. week. What time? Well, do you want to change it? Or you I, I want to change it. All right. Well, noon and until further notice. <laughs> until further notice? Until the boss decides. I really want to do Sunday. What do you think? Can we do Sunday? Most likely. You, you, you won't get mad? No, Ingrid won't do. Ingrid, look at, look at, look at her. She's just, no, 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 man. Why can't we do Sunday? You can do Sunday. I just won't do Sunday. <sighs> but Ingrid, but you can do Sunday. You. It's not the same Yes, it is. You. It's fine. It's you not. can do look, Sunday. Look at how much you do. You're answering all these comments. Um, Man, I, I, what, we need to figure out how to go through the comments. Is it just too many? Are we feeling well, overwhelmed? Well, I, I had to have two screens open here because I'm not logged in like you are over there. You need to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, we got to figure that out. All right, we're going to figure that out. Again, and guys. Then, and my sister's about to eat the blueberry pie my neighbor brought over. So oh, okay, I, all, right, I need to, all right. I need to get We'll see you there. guys later. Yeah, blueberry pie is about to be eaten. Yeah. Happy weekend. We'll see you guys later.